Well, what? Well, that just doesn't make sense to me, Handy. I don't understand it. You're a bad handyman. Why are you sweating it? Why are you soldering it when it has threads? It's got threads, handyman. You shouldn't be soldering it. At the end of today's video, we're going to talk about yesterday's video or last week's or I don't know whenever this is going up but we're going to talk about this there's some wildly inaccurate comments on the video where I repair this we're also going to discuss a little bit more of the locks and how I'm changing my pricing based on some certain things so stay tuned to the end of the video for some very entertaining discussion man talk don't crash don't talk when you drive handyman you might you might trash Remember those days when I used to get razzed in the comments for making YouTube videos while I'm driving? Today, we are on the road. On the road to install some smart locks. Wi-Fi locks. Oh, oh. No, no, Andy, get your seatbelt on. Don't mess up my audio. There we go. So yeah, there are three doors. One door might be a giant pain in the butt. I'll actually have to earn my paycheck on that door. The other two doors should be 15 minutes or less. I quoted them $100 each. Not sure if that's enough or not, but we will find out. And I'll let you know at the end of the video if I charged enough. Is that a cop behind me? I think this guy wants to race. You want me to spool? Oh yeah. Whoo! Oh, that is a cop. So this is the first door we'll be working on. It's an old wood door, leaded glass. You don't see that very often. This is the brass letter hole thingy here. Most likely there isn't going to be the correct size hole drilled here. This is some antique weather stripping this is going to be the most difficult one so let's get uh get started pulling this old one out and seeing what we have to do to put the new one in oh we may have gotten lucky we might have gotten lucky people always comment how the heck does this guy get so dang lucky well it just happens i thought i was going to have to put my jig on here drill this out smart lock goes vertical. So it's gonna cover this little bump here that is drilled out for some sort of previous lock. My day just got easier. Make it rain. So this is the smart lock I'll be installing. You can get this off the shelf at Home Depot. I will also put links in the description. This is by Lockly. L-O-C-K-L-Y. This is the Secure Pro Deadbolt Edition. World's most advanced smart lock. Wow, I don't know if I'm qualified to put this in, but we'll, we'll see if it works. Hooks up to your Wi-Fi. Uh, you control it through your cell phone. What if you can control it through a computer? It's got a fingerprint reader and digital keypad. And we're gonna figure all of that out. It's gonna give you a quick rundown of the parts and pieces, how they go together, and then I'm gonna assemble it. This here is your outside keypad. You've got your communication wire right here. That goes on the outside. These two pieces go on the inside like this. This is your battery cover. I'll go over how to put the batteries in. You have to hold a button down as you're installing the last battery. If you've installed other digital locks, just regular push button ones, it's very similar to that. This is the bolt. It even comes with some Energizer batteries. One other thing is there is a, a little serialized card. I don't want to show it on screen. I'll show maybe a screenshot of one that doesn't belong to this lock. It says, keep this as if it was your driver's license because it's the only way to identify the owner of that lock. Uh-oh. Is that gonna fit? I don't think that's going to work. That one's going to be too short. Got lucky again. Maybe I start playing the lottery. This here slides just underneath it. I'll give you a close up of what this looks like here in just a second. Keep in mind, all these steps I'm doing are very similar to other electronic locks. The difference comes later on when it's time to program everything wire feeds through that get in your hole right now i'm just squeezing it together what's the deal here what is that hitting the wire it's... i 
Everything so far is basic and straightforward, just like you were installing a regular deadbolt. Except you got this big plate. I don't have this snug down yet, but I will get everything tightened up for the final, final snug. This comes with a lot of stickers on it so that you don't mess it up. There's all sorts of stickers. Just showing you how, how things go from the battery compartment to where the, the wire plugs in. It can, like I said earlier, there's a lot of instructions for your first time. It was enough sticky on it. It might feel a little overwhelming, but they try to make it foolproof. I don't know if you can see right up in there is where the, the plug goes. Remember, your last battery, you gotta press and hold the program button as you're putting it in. Press and hold program. Look at that, that's it. There's a screw up here. I'm gonna leave that screw off in case I gotta pull this back off and reset, restart it. That's in case uh, it doesn't go according to plan as far as um, programming this. This here, right here, is a little, I think that's a magnet. There's another piece. Whoa, whoa, easy there, easy there. I think sometimes they got a mind of their own. <laughs> this device in this box pairs up with the lock and then pairs up with your Wi-Fi, which pairs up with your phone, your smart device. <laughs> Everything's a smart device these days. So this is it, this little guy right here. Jeez. So this is your little Wi-Fi deal here. So you plug this in close to the lock and as close as you can to your router. Right there. There's quite a bit of resistance going into the hole. <laughs> so if I put my weight into it, it makes it easier, but there's still some catching. <laughs> We got uninterrupted, smooth, full throw. Pretty straightforward so far. Had to do a little modification to get the magnet there. Final step, and the reason you bought this lock or reason you buy a smart lock is to control it with your phone. So you're gonna have to go download the app. I'm gonna go through this real quick. And if I come into anything that's significant, that isn't intuitive or that I've had to figure out, I'll let you know. But I'm just gonna hit add lock. Then it asks for your card. To me, the biggest benefit is the fingerprint reader. So all you gotta do, set up multiple fingers. You can also type in a big long code. It has to be six digits long, the buttons, they switch every time. So you can't just trace out the fingerprints if you're a, a burglar. These are never in the same place. So I'm now installing another lock, another smart lock. So this is the Vision Smart Lock with doorbell. So we've got a, an extra wire in here. This is a, a video feed, probably even audio on this one. So that's gonna go connect there. And this one has to connect in there. Here's what it looks like on the outside. It has a doorbell button. It also comes with a placard that you can put here or on the side of your house to that points to the doorbell button. So now that is ringing to the phone. It's also got the fingerprint reader. It's got the key code and it has the camera. Am I home? Hey, let me in, I'm hungry. So here is another Secure Pro deadbolt by Lockley installed on a brand new door. A few videos ago, I installed this whole door. I'll show you what it looks like from both sides. Very similar to the first one that I installed. Here it is from the inside. Auto lock is disabled. Though you can have it so that it auto locks. Every time you close the door, it senses that the lock is closed and automatically locks it. But that's not what they want. Two common comments from the previous video on this. All these hose bibs come with a threaded end, just like that. They also come ready to sweat on to copper pipe. This, this was attached to a Street 90. There was no copper pipe. They said, stick your mini pipe cutter up there and cut it off. You can't just cut this off. You, their only way 
to get this out was to unsweat it from the Street 90. There was no way that I could have gotten my torch way, way up in there and pulled it out. It, it just was not gonna happen. It was attached to a Street 90, then about a four inch piece of pipe, then another 90, and then went back to a T. So it went like this. So even if I cut it here, how do you get it out? Bang, bang, bang. You got a 90 on the end of it. <laughs> It ain't coming outside the house. I think the thing is, is they don't watch the entire video. So it wasn't until I got the siding completely pulled apart that you saw this was sweated into a street 90, zigged and zagged, and there's no place to cut it. You can't cut the, the 90. It, there was just nothing to cut. Why didn't you thread it in? Thread it into what? What I would have to do is sweat on a female threaded end. Only reason it cracked is because a hose was left up hooked up to it. Uh, another common statement was, why didn't you use a shark bike and some flexible pecs? Very good question. And probably the, the video probably didn't show uh, the angles and the lengths and the depths as accurate as if you were standing there looking at it with your own eye. I actually posted a link to a video I did five years ago where I did just that. I didn't need to use the pecs, but I used a shark bite and I didn't have to do the whole splitting of the siding. I, I cut an access hole, used my little mini cutter, pulled it out from the outside, did exactly what you guys suggested minus the pecs, but you still have to sweat copper. You would have to sweat on a fitting on the end of this. Some people had said, well, you could have gotten a shark bite anti-freeze hose spigot. I've never seen one. One probably does exist, but it's going to be a much larger diameter than this. And then, yeah, I, I could have drilled a larger hole in the siding and then and have to had to fill that up with caulking. Could have worked so that I could have Drilled a bigger hole, got a, a special shark bite, one of these, although I've never seen one, go through the bigger hole with peck stubbed onto it. And if I had the room, the length, you can't make pecs do a quick, a sharp, zig, a sharp zigzag like that. You need room and you also need this tilted up slightly. Another reason I didn't use shark bites is I could not get up in there. I, I, I could reach up like this and touch it. But keep in mind, there was a, a full built-in cabinets that were 14 inches deep. That prevented me to get getting up in there even closer. The next one was- Why aren't you putting pipe insulation on there? Pipe insulation would make this freeze even more. Well, but, well that just doesn't make sense to me, Handy. I don't understand it. You're a bad handyman. When you have your hose spigot outside your house, this is the cold, this is the heat sink or the freeze sink and it's going this way. Now, if you have a pipe inside a wall that is constantly freezing because maybe it's up against the outside of the house, that's something a little bit different. You would want to insulate between the pipe and the outside of the house or the, the your exterior sheeting. Or if you have a crack in your house and you've got a cold draft uh, blowing on a pipe, then you could use pipe insulation. But in this specific scenario, it freezes this way from the outside in. And what helps prevent it from freezing is the air that's surrounding it. Hopefully that answers a couple of those questions. There were lots of them. Uh, on to today's video. Uh, for those of you in the business, I used to charge $100 per smart lock, no matter what type of door. So now I asked for two pictures. Send me a picture of your door and send me a picture of your door jam. If it's a new, like production built home that has, you know, the pre-hung exterior doors, it's $100. If it's like the first video, some antique with leaded glass and a hodgepodge of old weather stripping and old strike plates, it's $200 to install a smart lock. Could be a digital lock, whatever. It's gonna be 200 bucks. Your pricing will vary depending on where you live. I do encourage you to leave comments, but uh, watch the entire video. Wait, 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 what's he got a torch out for? I said that thing's got threads on it. He's got, I see the threads. I'm so confused. Just 
watch the entire video. Yeah, so the video doesn't always do, do the project justice. You can't see all the details through a GoPro. But I'm gonna give you a, a close up. This is meant to be sweated to the end of a half inch copper pipe. It can also be threaded on to a female fitting that is sweated on to the end of a half inch copper pipe. But all production installs are sweated. Got that taken care of now? Okay. You can tell I'm kind of happy. It's June 1st and it's about time. It's about time to, what do we call it? Bug out. We're bugging out. I'm bugging out soon. I've got one more video to film and then it's freedom, freedom. Uh, and I'm gonna be going full Full bore on the third channel, editing, 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 uploading on the third super secret channel. Enough rambling for today. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button and click the bell so you know when all these videos are coming out. They're still coming out. I may not be here, but they'll be coming out. Goodbye.